Here's a problem that's fairly simple in its setup. It's going to allow us to explore several different interesting aspects of physics. We're going to learn something about how forces combine together, how they result in an acceleration. We can learn how to work with the force of gravity, with the force of tension, conventions working with pulleys, and also some ideas of how forces combine together, forces such as weights of different objects, as an example in this situation where they're connected by a cable. So here's our scenario. Masses M1 and M2 are connected by a flexible and inextensible cable of negligible mass. The cable runs over a massless, frictionless fixed pulley so that the two weights hang vertically downward. M1 and M2 aren't specified. They can be anything. The diagram shows M2 being bigger than M1. We'll kind of assume that's true as we go on, but that's not going to be necessary in our setup. The stuff about flexible and inextensible cable, negligible mass, massless, frictionless pulley, or to make the problem simpler, so we don't have to worry about things like where mass 1 and mass 2 might be if the cable stretches. We don't have to worry about the inertia of the pulley or any friction with the cable running over the pulley. The questions that we're told to solve are the tension in the cable, the acceleration of the weights, and then what total force the weights combined pull downward on the pulley. This is going to be a Newton's second law problem, most likely. With any problem that involves forces and accelerations, it's important for us to know exactly what the forces are so that we can find the net force, which is going to be our key to finding the acceleration. To find the net force on any object, it's a really good idea to make a free body diagram to make sure that we can visually see all the forces that are acting. So let's start off making free body diagrams for mass 1 and mass 2. First thing I've done is set up a coordinate direction. Up will be the positive direction. We didn't have to set it that way, but it's just convenient. The free body diagrams that I've set up one for mass m1 and one for mass m2. Both of them have the same tension pulling up. The reason we have the same tension is because we have this massless, frictionless pulley and a flexible cable. So that means when we have a situation like that, all that the pulley does is change the direction of the force of tension on the cable. It's not going to change its magnitude. If you pull hard on one section of the cable, that tension is going to go throughout the entire cable the part that hangs down from the pulley, the part that goes over the pulley, and the part that hangs down on the pulley on the other side. So that's one simplifying assumption that we can make from this situation, that the tension in the cable is the same for both systems. We have the weight pulling down for one and the weight pulling down for two. Those are not shown as the same because we have no reason to believe they're the same. In fact, we want this to be general so they can be very different. To find the net force on each object, you just add all the forces together. All the forces are the tension and the weight. So here I've shown the net force on mass 1 is just a tension minus W1. The reason minus is because the tension and the weight are in opposite directions. I've got the tension being the positive direction, so the weight must be in the negative direction. Then I can convert the weight of 1 to its mass times g. I can do the same thing for mass 2. To find their accelerations, just take the net force divided by the mass. That's what I've done here. And then to actually divide this expression by the mass, the tension becomes T over M1, and the weight, which is M1G, the M1s cancel out and just becomes G. Exactly the same thing happens for mass 2. There's a constraint on the system that we know about, but which we haven't expressed in our mathematical model yet, and that is the fact that the two accelerations are inextricably linked. If mass 1 goes up, mass 2 goes down at exactly the same rate, and it changes at the same rate, so the accelerations are equal and opposite. So this negative sign is showing that as mass 1 accelerates up, mass 2 accelerates down. In the case where mass 2 is heavier than mass 1, if it were the other way, it's still a negative, it's just that one of them would be negative and one of them would be positive. So on our system, we really have four unknown quantities. The tension acting on mass 1, the tension acting on mass 2, the acceleration of mass 1, and the acceleration of mass 2. To solve for those four unknown quantities, or to solve any one of those four unknown quantities, we essentially need four equations. One equation that I've not even bothered to write down, I just kind of assumed, is that the tension acting on mass 1 is exactly the same as the tension acting on mass 2. So I've incorporated that as T, just calling it T. Essentially we could say T1 equals T2 equals t, and so that's incorporated into these equations. Then we're down to three unknowns, the tension and the two accelerations. 
and we have three equations. We have this acceleration equation, this acceleration equation, and this acceleration equation. Between these three equations, we should be able to solve for our three unknowns. Let's go about doing that. Let's solve for the first one, which is tension. So the way I'm going to do that is to start with this equation, a1 equals minus a2, and substitute in our expressions up here for a1 and a2. So on the left side I have a1, on the right side I have the negative of a2. Verify that that's what we have up here. The rest is just doing algebra. What I've done in the next step looks somewhat confusing. I've multiplied both sides by m1, m2. That gets rid of the m1 and the m2 in the denominator. Then I combine like terms on the same side of the equation, put the mt terms on the left side of the equation, and the mg terms on the right side of the equation. Next, I realize we have m1t plus m2t. Well, both of those have a common factor of t, so we can factor that out. Then we can finally solve for our unknown t by dividing both sides of the equation by the sum m1 plus m2. And this is what we get, that the tension in the cable is 2g m1 m2 over m1 plus m2. That looks rather complicated, maybe somewhat daunting. Let's see if things get a little simpler when we look at accelerations. We can find them independently, and then we should be able to verify that they are opposite each other. So for the first one, we're going to plug the tension into the acceleration equation. Our tension was 2g m1 m2 over m1 plus m2. Divide that by m1. What that essentially does is get rid of the factor of m1 in the numerator. Notice that these two terms have a factor of g in them. If we factor that out, what we have is 2m2 over m1 plus m2 minus 1. Well, the minus 1 becomes minus m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2. The 2m2 minus m2 leaves just m2 as the difference. Then we have this fairly simple, have this fairly simple result for the acceleration g times m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2. Let's look at this for a moment. First of all, we can see that the units work just fine. A difference of masses divided by sum of masses, so we have mass divided by mass, that's unitless, that's multiplied by a factor of g, g is just the acceleration due to gravity, acceleration units, that's fine. The acceleration is greater if the difference between the masses is big, and as the difference between the masses gets small, the acceleration gets small. That makes sense. If one of the two weights greatly outweighs the other, it's going to pull very hard and fast on the system. If they're quite similar, then it won't accelerate so much. The denominator tells us that the bigger the masses are, the less it will accelerate, which tells us basically that the inertia of the system is greater when the masses are greater. That makes perfect sense. Doing exactly the same kind of math for the acceleration of particle 2, we get almost the same result. Notice that what I got here was g times m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2. This is the exact negative of what was here, which is what we expect, so that's good. To find the total force acting on the pulley, we just have to add together the two tensions. Both of those are pulling down. Those are the only forces pulling down on the pulley. We add together the tension from 1 and the tension from 2. They happen to be the same, so that's just 2 times our tension. That's just 2 times the result of the tension that we got before. That answers the three questions that we were asked. I'd like us to examine the physics a little bit to get a better feel for what these equations are actually telling us, and also to verify that the equations are telling us what we intuitively know about this system. The first case I'd like us to look at is where mass 1 and 2 are the same. In other words, the system is balanced. We expect in that case that there's not going to be an acceleration, and that the tension on each cable is just going to be equal to the weight of each mass. All we need to do to verify this is to establish that mass 1 equals mass 2, so let's just call them both m and substitute m in our equations wherever we saw m1 or m2. We find that the tension, we can just make this m1, m2 become m times m, and here the m1 plus m2 becomes m plus m. This becomes m squared over 2m, just becomes m, multiply it by g, we get mg. So that works. The tension in each segment of the cable is just equal to the weight of the mass hanging on that segment of the cable. Perfect. The acceleration, plug our m wherever we saw m1 or m2. We have m2 minus m1 in the numerator. Since m2 and m1 are the same thing, that becomes zero in the numerator, zero acceleration. The total force pulling down on the pulley is just twice the weight of one of the masses. Perfect. 
Another special case I'd like to look at is the absolute unbalance. One mass is absolutely zero, and the other mass is something. I'll call it m again. What do we expect to see in such a case? Well, we expect to see that it accelerates down with free fall. Tension will be zero, and for there to be some tension on the cable, you need both weights to pull on it. So M1 is the heavy one, M2 is going to have a mass of zero. So everywhere we see M1, we'll plug in M. Everywhere we see M2, we'll plug in zero. The tension, well, since we have a factor of M1, M2 in the numerator, the factor of M2 being zero makes the numerator zero, makes the whole fraction zero. The tension is zero, just as we expect. How about the acceleration? Well, here we have a difference of the masses. So M2 minus M1, well, M2 is zero, M1 is M, so that becomes zero minus M. And look, our acceleration is minus G for particle one. Makes sense because it's accelerating straight down. For number two, its acceleration is straight up. That works perfectly. And the total force acting on the pulley is twice the tension, twice nothing is still nothing, zero.